Hey everyone, CPO here, and uh, this video I'm going to cover a new update from Supernote for the A5X and A6X. I happen to have the A5X here in front of me, looks a lot like this, uh, and I noticed there was a new update. And so this is the second update that's happened since my last video. The other one, not a whole lot really to report, but this update has a couple of interesting things that I wanted to share with you. All right, so the update was released yesterday, 426 of 21. I did install it yesterday, just now getting a chance to do a video for you. Uh, again, this is for the A5X and the A6X. The last update for the A5 was January 27th, same for the A6. So uh, we're still seeing a little bit more progression with the X series, uh, and I think that's to be expected. But eventually the non-X series, the A5 and A6, will catch up uh, in features and capabilities, so I'm told. Uh, so anyway, let's see what they added. They added the date format under the English language. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you uh, how things differ because I think it's kind of cool to see what we're looking at. So I'm going to pop you over here. Uh, and what we will do is we will go in and look at the display and input. I have English set odd, obviously, but now under the date and time menu, you can change the format to either be, in this case, 27 space April space 2021 or April space 27 comma 2021. So if you want the long format or the, uh, the notation format. So up to you, but now that option exists and it wasn't there before. And now, what I think is probably the biggest thing from this update is they now have given us Supernote servers for synchronization in the UK and the US using Amazon Web Services. So this is huge for those of you who want to store your data geographically close to you, if you're in the US or the UK, obviously, uh, or for whatever reason have policy restrictions or just personal uh, restrictions that don't allow you to store your cloud uh, data in either the Japan uh, AWS location or the China servers, and I don't know what backend they're using for that. Um, but now we have the option of Amazon Web Services in the US and the UK. So to find that, what you're gonna do is go in here to security and privacy, and then you're gonna see down here at the bottom, you can now select your server location that has options for US, UK, and then obviously Japan and China have been there. They also give you some sort of a, a warning about if you're using multiple A5 or A6 devices that you might wanna create a separate account for them. So you'll see the pop-up whenever it shows up. So just take a look at that pop-up and make sure you understand what it's telling you. All right, now another, actually this is another big thing. The template background layer can be hidden. Uh, this is something that I mentioned I was really hoping we'd be able to have. Um, and uh, yeah, it is now here. So let's go, what do I want to do here? Uh, let's just go to files. And we'll go to note. We'll go to test. And then I will create a new note. And then I have a background uh, template here, as you can see, which is this um, just regular, uh, I think it's college ruled lines. Um, but now before you could not hide that, but now you can. And so why that is also cool is because you can use a template uh, and have like something you wanna trace and then you can hide that uh, and then continue going and bring it back and forth. Uh, when tracing things and then when you're done you can hide it and then export it without it. So that's really cool I'm um, glad that they decided to add that Added floating smart toolbar feature in mailbox. Uh, so this is cool. You have more uh, pen choices basically uh, Whenever you uh, are in your mailbox. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna swipe down go to mailbox and let's say I wanted to compose a, uh, a new message. So keyboard input uh, is obviously where you would uh, type your message. 
but you can also do handwriting input. You can only do one or the other. So I'm going to confirm to delete that. And I'm in handwriting input. Um, and it looks like I need that. So what this does is allows you to make a handwritten note that will come along as an attachment. But what they didn't previously give you was all of the choices of this um, the menu for your pen options. So now I can use um, all of these features as if I was writing a note. Right, so I can do that now inside my mail, including, let's just erase it all. So yeah, uh, support to add attachments into feedback. So if you happen to be somebody that needs to submit feedback, let's go to menu, feedback. You now have a ability to add attachments. Whoops, down here at the bottom, let me go back right here. So uh, that's how you do that. And then finally on added, added vector handwriting options when exporting documents and notes into PDF files. All right, so I'll go ahead and create a new note file. And then I'll just write vector on here. And then if I want to export this, you can see I have choices of ping or PDF. I'm going to select PDF, choose export, and you can see I have original or vector. Once I hit vector, I confirm. It's going to dump that into my export folder. Now I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to export it as a regular original Okay, so I've got two versions, and I'll show you the difference. That's why I'm doing that. Let's come back to my screen here. And I have Dropbox. Uh, let me come over here and hit Sync, which should synchronize. Hopefully, it won't take too long. And there are our files. So the first one is the vector. The second one that I did was the non-vector. So I'll go ahead and open that up first just to take a look. This is the original version. Let me hide that toolbar. And you can see here when I zoom in on that, it starts to get a little bit jagged whenever you uh, expand it, right? That's a non-vector graphic. But if we go back and look at the new vector version, What it does is it sort of cleans up the lines and turns it into a vector format. So now it doesn't get jagged. It's very well anti-aliased. And you can make it bigger and bigger and bigger. And yeah, you don't get jagged lines. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a huge thing for a lot of people. Especially artists, people that like to draw, that's a big deal. Or, or heck, people that like to write and wanna export it and use that writing in something else. All right, now let's look at the things that they fixed I don't know if these are gonna matter to you or not. I'm just gonna sort of run through them. I don't really have any of these issues or haven't noticed them, uh, but they fixed the dislocation issues of title shadow after moving the note page, fixed increase of note data caused by frequent plug and, and unplug of OTG U drive, fixed dislocation issue after copy and paste of notes by cross operating on different SuperNote devices, uh, I don't even think I saw that one. File damage issue caused by copying the note file being modified on a computer via MTP. Uh, and they suggest to avoid this issue by refreshing SuperNote Explorer page on computer before copy. Okay, so those are the things they fixed. They did adjust some things. Uh, these are minor tweaks. Uh, for example, the default name 
of the new file uh, is changed. And what they did, they've used the same format, this year, 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 month, month, day, day, H, H, M, M, S, S, except there used to not be an underscore there. So if we go back and look at, um, for example, in this test folder, here's the old format, which has the, uh, the date and time sort of blended together. And now they just put a little uh, space uh, an underscore between the date and the time to make it a little bit cleaner to read. And I think it does help with readability quite a bit. Um, they adjusted Bluetooth setting from submenu to main menu of settings. Again, this is a small tweak. But basically, they have pulled out Bluetooth right here uh, in the main menu. So it's easy to find. Third-party application management is divided into Supernote App Store and My Apps. So if you go to Apps, uh, you now have what's in the Supernote App Store, still only Kindle, and then what apps you have, which still only Kindle for me. Uh, and then part of the English UI phrases, which I don't know exactly what that means, um, but apparently there has been a tweak there. And that is it. Um, that's what's changed in this Latest update, this is uh, Chave 1.0.1291, released on 4.26.2021. I would say grab the update, um, especially if you see those things that are useful to you. Anyway, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. I will catch you on the next one.